This video classroom lesson is sponsored by Transmission Bench. Visit the transmissionbench.com store for the deluxe super kit, other parts, and even the video classroom lessons used during this project. I did congratulate you on the progress you've made in the last lesson, and you certainly deserve it. But we still have quite a bit of assembly ahead of us, so let's get back to work. This is Ford E4OD 4R100 class, lesson 12. In this session, we'll install the center support, intermediate and overdrive piston housing, overdrive planetary and coast clutch assembly, as well as the overdrive clutch pack. The center support will be installed into the transmission next. Get it from the parts bench. We need to prepare it first. Start by making sure the large center support to direct clutch drum thrust washer is pasted into place. This will keep it from falling off as the support is lowered into the case. Replace the direct clutch ceiling rings. The new ones are in the subkit labeled ceiling ring kit. Put fluid onto the rings bushing journals forward clutch ceiling ring bore roller bearing and thrust washer Put assembly lube onto these surfaces. It's ready to be installed. But before we do, a few surfaces in the case need prepping too. Use assembly lube or transmission fluid to lubricate these areas of the case. This will prevent the support housing from seizing as it is lowered into place.
align these bolt holes and direct clutch feed passage with these holes in the case. Carefully lower it as straight as you can. Rock it gently side to side in order to encourage the forward and direct clutch sealing rings into their bores. The support will finally bottom out onto a ledge. Rotate the support and align it with the holes in the case. Now let's get the bolts which fasten it. The old bolts which we placed into a box during teardown should not be reused. We use the new ones which come in the kit. They're in a sub kit labeled overdrive and center support bolts. The two larger diameter ones are for the center support. Put a drop of fluid under each head. Use a 13 millimeter socket, extension, and ratchet to tighten them lightly. A torque wrench must be used to finally tighten them to 10 foot pounds, 120 inch pounds, or 14 newton meters. This is the intermediate and overdrive piston housing assembly. Take it and the large diameter snap ring which fastens it into the case to the other work area. This is a diaphragm type return spring for the intermediate piston. Install it onto the center support with the inner ends of the fingers pointing downward. Extensions on three of the fingers center it. Set it like so. Twist and pull out the intermediate piston. Turn it over and set it aside. Turn the housing over. This is the overdrive clutch piston. Our demo 2000 year model uses a stamped steel piston. If you are working on a 1989 through 1995 model, this piston will be made of aluminum. This bluish colored part is a Belleville type return spring. It is retained by this snap ring, which is notorious for popping out of its groove. If the snap ring in the housing you are working on is still in its groove like this one, remove it by spreading its ends with snap ring pliers. Set it aside. Lift the spring out.
Note the dish shape and how the inner ends of the fingers point upward. Turn it over and set it aside. Pull the overdrive piston out, turn it over, and set it over the spring. At this point, wash each part one at a time in mineral spirits. Lubricate the overdrive piston bore with fluid. Check the inner and outer lips of the bonded seal. They should be pliable and not hard and brittle. These pistons are almost always in great shape. However, a new one comes in the Deluxe Super Kit for 1996 and later models. Here it is. Set it onto the housing. Rotate and push it downward into its bore. If you are working with an earlier model with an aluminum piston, you will need to replace the inner and outer lip seals. You'll find them in the overhaul package. They're in a sub kit labeled overdrive clutch. Even though a bonded type piston is in the picture, it's understood the seals actually fit the aluminum style piston. Regardless of which type of piston is used, turn the Belleville spring over and set it onto the piston. The inner ends of the spring should be pointing upward. The original type snap ring can go in next, and I will eventually show you how to install it, but there is an improved type you should try to install. It comes in the Deluxe Super Kit. This is a Sonex brand spiral type ring, which is superior to the original one. It is a spiral, gapless type, which will not pop out. By the way, this same ring is also included in the Transgo HD kit. It is mentioned in a supplemental instruction sheet. In other words, if you elect to build the high performance version of the transmission, you'll have a spare spiral ring if you need it. Installing this type of ring will require finesse and patience. In my opinion, getting it into its groove is the most challenging procedure of this video classroom project, but it is worth the attempt. If you do find the following procedure a little too frustrating, you can simply install the original type ring which I will also demonstrate how to do later. I'll take the housing and ring to the foot press. 
there are large circular feet for this tool, which will depress all of the spring fingers at the same time, allowing you to roll the ring into its groove very quickly. I simply use the smaller feet, which I use most of the time. Hold the ring like so. After depressing a few of the fingers, the snap ring groove is exposed. I insert the end of the ring in and release the pressure. Then I rotate the housing and depress the next fingers as I work more of the ring in. Eventually, with this method, I work the spiral ring completely into the groove. There is another way if you don't have a press. You can install the snap ring with only a large screwdriver, but you will need to work carefully and patiently. Even though the Sonax instructions suggest that you should not pry on the ring with a screwdriver, you can use it to depress the spring fingers downward allowing you to insert the snap ring into its groove. Hold the ring like so. Push the Belleville spring toward the outer side of the piston and push one finger down just enough to expose the groove. Insert as much of the end of the ring as possible. Release the pressure on the finger. Insert the screwdriver into the gap between fingers. Roll the ring into the groove as you pry it downward. Work your way around the spring until the entire ring is in the groove. As I mentioned before, don't be discouraged if you do not succeed on your first couple of attempts. I had to get accustomed to doing this too. Keep trying until you succeed. Of course, you can also default to installing the original snap ring if you absolutely must. In a similar way in which you can install the Sonax ring, this one can be inserted into its groove by simply prying it in with a large screwdriver. Push down on the snap ring and spring finger until the end goes into the groove. Pry the ring in by prying in each of the gaps. Turn the housing over. The lip seals on the intermediate piston have to be replaced. 
you'll find the new ones in a subkit labeled Intermediate Clutch. The lip or flare of the outer piston seal on the piston and the inner piston seal, which is in the housing, point downward. Remove the old seals and install the new ones. Lubricate the piston and housing with fluid. Install the piston by rotating it back and forth as you work it down into the housing. Rotate the piston until this wide gap straddles these feed holes. The large intermediate piston should be pointing downward. Align this bolt hole with the hole in the case. Lower it carefully until it makes contact with the Belleville return spring. Keep it as straight as possible. Do not force it. If it cocks sideways and gets stuck, pull it upward to free it and try again. Again, align the housing bolt hole with the one in the case if you need to. Note how it is about 3 16 of an inch above where it should be in order to install the bolt which fastens it to the case. The housing needs to be pushed further downward with a tool. We'll need the homemade tool we used during the disassembly and two of the pump to case bolts. Set the tool like so.
install the pump to case bolts about five turns. Tightening the center bolt will force the housing downward, compressing the Belleville return spring. Continue tightening until the housing is flush with the bottom of the snap ring groove. The bow hole will now be centered in the case hole. Get the large snap ring. Install it into its groove. Remove the tool. Return the pump to case bolts to the box. Get the housing to case bolt from the sub kit. Torque it to 8 foot-pounds, 96 inch-pounds, or 12 newton meters. Get the overdrive planetary gear assembly and the close clutch drum and take them to the other work area. Set the overdrive planetary assembly to the side. If you'll recall, we left the Coast Clutch drum loosely reassembled after teardown and cleaning in Lesson 6. Set this snap ring aside. Lift out the roller and spring cage. Lift out the piston return spring cage. Remove this snap ring. Lift out the end plate. Turn it over and set it onto the ring. Remove the friction and steel plates.
turn them over and place them onto the end plate. As I mentioned earlier in lesson six, there are two versions of the Coast Clutch drum used in this transmission. 1989 through 1997 models will have a cast steel drum which uses an aluminum piston. 1998 and later models use a stamped steel drum like this one which uses a steel piston with bonded seals. Use a mechanics pick and screwdriver to work the piston out. Deluxe Super Kits for 1996 and later transmissions come with a new piston. Let's get it. This is it. Put fluid onto the seals and bore of the drum. Carefully set the piston into the drum and push it downward until it bottoms out. If you are working on an earlier model with a cast steel drum, replace the lip seals on the aluminum piston now. You'll find the seals in the sub kit labeled overdrive clutch. Set the return spring cage into place. Place the snap ring here. Install the snap ring into its groove. Add fluid to the rotor and spring assembly. Place it onto the inner race. It's possible to install the rotor and spring cage assembly backward and upside down. Installed correctly, the springs should be pushing the rollers in this direction. 
there are three different versions of the roller and spring cage. If you need a new one, refer back to lesson six for descriptions and item numbers. We need the new steel and friction plates for the coast clutch. If you are working on a 1998 and later model, you'll need steels with 32 teeth. Even though our demo model, which came from behind a gas engine, requires only two, the kit actually comes with three because diesel models require an additional steel and friction plate. You'll use 60 tooth steel plates like these if you are working with an earlier 1989 through 1997 model. This kit comes with three Coast Clutch friction plates. We only need two. Remember to soak them in fluid. Set a steel in first. Add a friction plate. Install the other steel and friction plates. Of course, if you are working on a 1998 and later diesel version, install yet another pair of plates for a total of three steel and three friction plates. Turn the end plate over and place it onto the last friction. Simply set the snap ring like so. We'll leave it out of its groove for now. I've rearranged the bench with a gap to accommodate the shaft on the overdrive planet assembly. Set this thrust bearing aside. Turn the assembly over and remove the snap ring which fastens the roller clutch outer race to the ring gear. Lift out the outer race, turn it over, and set it onto the ring. Remove this thrust washer, turn it over, and set it down. Pull the planetary gear carrier up and out of the ring gear. Finally, remove this thrust bearing. Put fluid onto it. The races should rotate smoothly. Place it back onto the hub with the wide, flat race downward. Put fluid onto the planetary gears and the thrust bearing inside of the carrier.
install the carrier into the ring gear. Set the thrust washer onto the carrier. As I mentioned in an earlier lesson, the planet carrier and thrust washer may be different from this demo model. Put fluid onto this surface. Reinstall the outer race and snap ring. Turn the assembly over. Add fluid to the hub to center support thrust bearing. Put assembly lube onto the race which has the protruding lip in order to paste it to the hub. The lip of the race protrudes almost an eighth of an inch. Once again, remove the snap ring and plates of the coast clutch. Set the planetary assembly onto the coast clutch. It should rotate freely in a counterclockwise direction and lock if you attempt to turn it clockwise. Set a steel plate into the drum. Install a friction plate. Add a steel plate. Install the other friction plate. Set the end plate into place. Finally, replace the snap ring. If you are installing the optional Transgo HD kit, there is a special snap ring which you must install now. The kit has a thicker, larger diameter ring. Follow the procedure to grind one end in order for the ends to butt together when installed. I've already ground about a sixteenth of an inch off of one end. Turn the assembly over. In order to move the entire assembly to the transmission for installation, you must support it from below, preventing the coast clutch and friction plate inner teeth from moving upward and off of the splines on the overdrive ring gear. In other words, don't pick it up by the coast clutch drum. If you can, Use large snap ring pliers and reach way down into the input shaft splines of the planet carrier. 
it will take a firm grip, but use the pliers to lift the assembly like so. Set it into place. Get the overdrive clutch pack and snap ring. We need the new overdrive steel and friction plates from the kit. The kit comes with three to accommodate diesel models, but our demo model only needs two. Diesel models will use all three of the friction plates, but we only need two. Take the new steel and friction plates to the transmission. A new thin steel plate goes in first against the piston. Note the irregular spacing of the outer lugs. Look for this wide gap. It goes like so. Set a friction plate in. Add the other steel. Install the other friction. At this point, install another steel and friction plate if your model came with three steel and three friction plates. Set the very thick end plate in. Install the snap ring. Get this thrust bearing. It goes between the pump and the overdrive sun gear. The wider race fits into this pocket when the pump is installed later. Take it to the transmission. Put fluid onto it. Set it into place with the narrower race downward onto the sun gear. Remember, this wider race will go into the pocket on the pump. We finally reached the end of lesson 11, but there is one more part to easily install, the input shaft. It will only go in one way. The end near the longer bushing journal goes down into the overdrive assembly. This concludes lesson 11. After a break, go to the next lesson and we'll install the pump and a few other items.